Don't burn that steer. Marcus Alley. Changing a bar of E brand into a box W. No, I, I found that here. Look, you can ask Arch Hollenbeck. He'll tell you who I am. Oh, I know who you are. You're a thieving cattle rustler. No, I ain't. Look, just as I got in, somebody rode out fast. Honest. That's too bad. Now there ain't anybody here to back up your story. Hollenbeck's one of the men who hired you, Mr. Halley. You can ask him. He'll tell you who I am. Or Ben Cartwright. You ask him. I don't have to ask anybody anything. That running iron, this hog-tied steer, tells me everything I have to know. You see, the Cattlemen's Association doesn't pay me to ask questions. The Cattlemen's Association pays me to stop wrestling. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. My own way. Now you can go for your gun. I don't want to go for my gun. You don't understand, mister. You don't have a choice. like that's got to add up to Russell. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wells was one of my hands. He had every right to be here. With a running iron? Well, I admit that looks bad, but maybe there's some explanation. Oh, he had an explanation. He said he came across the fire, the running iron, and the steer by accident. I didn't want to kill him. He went for his gun. Mr. Hollenbeck, I know how you feel. You said you surprised him. Why didn't you just hold your gun on him and take his away from him? You should have brought him in, Allie. He would have talked to me, Allie. Gentlemen, I didn't have no choice. Unless you figure that I should have let him get off the first shot. And the man that I deputize is telling the truth. Now, if the Wells story is correct, there'd be another set of tracks coming into the fire and going out. And there wasn't any. Just shows you how wrong you can be. I'd have sworn Wells was an honest man. That seems to wrap it up, Roy. But much obliged. All right, man. See you later, boy. Well, Roy, Ali is waiting outside. Would you ask him to step in, please? I show up. Thank you. Why do we have to see Ali again, Ben? He's not on trial, and we're no jury. Well, there's been some question about the way he's been doing his job, and since we're his employers, I think we should uh, we should tell him our investigation proves that uh, his report is completely accurate. Well, I'm going on record as being dead set against everything that he's done in this case. Oh, 
Mr. Alley, uh, would you uh, sit down, please? We, uh, we wanted you to know, Mr. Alley, uh, that the sheriff has corroborated the report that you made to us. Alley, the association is satisfied that you shot in self-defense. The association also wants to impress on you, Mr. Alley, that the next rustler you catch, you bring in alive. Well, I'll agree to that if the association can guarantee that the man won't draw on me. Nobody's expecting you to let yourself get shot. We just want to be sure that there's You just no... want to be sure that there's no more surprises. And what's that supposed to mean? Like finding out who's really stealing your cattle? I think perhaps you'd better explain that remark. I'll be glad to. The men that are stealing your cattle are on your payroll. That's right. On your payroll, Mr. Cartwright, Mr. Hollenbeck, Mr. Johansson, Mr. Pauly. Any spread with steers to steal. You see, it's a pattern. And it never changes whether you're in Arizona, Nevada, Texas. They're quiet, decent ranch hands during the day. And they're thieves at night. Well, just just think about it now. Who else knows the country, the herds, the back trails, even in the dark, but the very men that work them day in, day out? I tell you, there's nothing worse and more dirty than a man that'll steal from his employer. And I'm not going to lose a minute's sleep over some fool that gets killed trying to draw on me. Any more questions? No more questions. Fine. Then I'll be getting on with the job you gentlemen are paying for. Okay. Well, I've seen some nervy ones, but that alley's got them all beat. Well, I've got to get over to the bank before I leave town, gentlemen. Yeah, we are finished, aren't we, Ben? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Well, there is one more thing. Mrs. Wells. I think someone ought to go see her, see if there's anything we can do for her. He worked for you, Arch. Yeah, it's a thing I'll have to do. But I don't mind telling you I sure don't look forward to it. Well, I, uh, I know her. Her father worked for me in the Ponderosa. If you like, I'll go along with you. I'd be obliged, Ben. I'd be much obliged. Hollenbeck did come. Mr. Cartwright's with him. Ben Cartwright? Mr. Hollenbeck and I came by to see if there was anything we, we could do. Do? Thank you, no, gentlemen. I don't think there is anything to do under the circumstances. Mr. Cartwright, Prudence is going to come to live with me. Fine idea, Lamar. Very fine. We're deeply sorry, Mrs. Wells. You weren't sorry when you hired the range detective. Why be sorry now? Prudence, hush. 
I won't, Papa. That's the way I feel. Nobody's sorry except you and me. The cattlemen are getting what they want and hiring strangers to kill anyone they want. Mrs. Wells. Harlan was wrestling. There was a hot running iron in his hand. And that's good enough reason to hire a gunman from somewhere and murder him. Oh, Mrs. Wells. Mrs. Wells says, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you didn't know anything about it. But there was a pretty large organization. And they were wrestling hundreds of heads of cattle. Mr. Cartwright, I did not know about the organization, but I did about Harlan. He took that steer. I'm sure of it. And last October, when things were so bad for everyone, he took one then too and sold it. I don't know where, but he sold it. He was going to sell the one he took last week too. How much a steer now, Mr. Cartwright? Fourteen dollars? Sixteen dollars, Mr. Hollenbeck? Yes, he was wrong. I admit it. He should have been sent to jail. With shame, I admit it. But did you have to hire someone to shoot him from ten feet away? How do you pay your Marcus Alley, Mr. Cartwright? By the dollar value of the beef? Two steers, thirty dollars? How do you pay you, Mr. Alley? In silver? time tonight. I'm gonna get all sheared and shaved and a new pair of pants and a clean shirt. And I'm gonna buy me a great big white Stetson I cost wear. It sounds like you've been saving up. You know, I never had it this fine before. I mean, hunting varmints for you guys and the cattlemen give me a bounty on every cougar pelt I bring in. And then they still leave you the first to sell. <laughs> Joe. Full of that rich on my drinks. Oh, so I think you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what I'll do. As soon as I deposit these over at Mr. Simpson, I'll come back and do that. <laughs> Good enough. Well, well, well. Josiah Heath. Mr. Alley. How long has it been? Quite a spell. Four years. Four years and better. You weren't carrying belts last time I saw you. But there was an animal around, if I remember. Josiah Heath, and now you're trapping. I work for the Cartwrights. Last night, that nice as apple pie. You know, we got unfinished business. I expect I'll be seeing you. Come to think of it, I'm sure I'm going to be seeing you one last time. What was that all about? You heard him. I'm a dead man. Nally caught us cold. Me and the two Tazel boys that lived in that hard scrabble place right next to ours. Running irons, changing brands? No. No running irons. No fire. Hard times in Texas then. 
was the early spring of the big blizzard winter of 64. We'd lost every head we owned, so did Haswell's. For three months, we lived on shadow soup and rabbit track stew. And we happened on this little stray belly deep in the bog. We got a rope around it and pulled the little critter out. The little thing could scarcely stand. It sure to have died if we hadn't happened along. And now, that don't change the truth. We were stealing beef that didn't belong to us. And Allie caught us. You tell him you pulled the steer out of the bog, that, that you were hungry? Yeah, we told him. But like I said, uh, the why of it didn't matter, leastways not to him. What'd he do? He told how he hated rustlers, scum. Oh, worse than scum, not fit to breathe the air or walk the face of the earth. And all this time he was holding a gun on you, right? Yeah, while he was talking. And then he put the pistol back in his holster, and he stood there grinning, daring us to draw. What, three of you, and he wanted you to draw on Well, three to one's pretty big odds, but not when gunfighting's your business, and the three are scared. But you got away. Benji Taswell drew on him first, and then Hack. Allie gunned him down. But he took a bullet in the leg and I got away. Well, that was in Texas and a long time ago. Yeah, four years. Three and a half I've been working for you all. I ain't ever been in any trouble since. That don't make too much difference to Mr. Allie. One thing he hates worse than a rustler is the one that got away. Comes out and out with Holland back and Allison. I don't think that man's ever gonna rest while I'm still alive. mission before they start fooling around with another man's horse. Why, you're bristling like a porcupine, Mr. Cartwright. You've been talking to your wrestler. Either tell us what you want or move on. There ain't a man alive who believe in an employee who'll steal from him. Makes him look too much like a fool. They fight it every time. I think my little brother's right. You better mount up and ride. What's going on? I'm just trying to do my job, Mr. Cartwright. Your boys are kind of getting in the way. Look, Pa, all I wanted Allie to do was tell me what he wanted. He wouldn't do it. Joseph! He was out hunting evidence. He asked us to come along as witnesses. Well, I've been looking for a horse wearing a crooked shoe with a half-moon piece out of it. You see, the first time I saw the track was up by the ashes of a restless fire, up on the high meadow near Twin Peaks. The second time I saw the track was today, right in this street. Mr. Cartwright? It's my horse. I figured that once I find the horse, I'm going to find the rustler. That's exactly what I did. I was up at Twin Peaks a couple of weeks ago when I got that cougar, remember? Is he someone moved 10 or 12 steers across that high meadow, left one of them with a broken leg in rocks? The kind of thing happens when you're drifting cattle in the dark. The steer I had a bar V mark on it. That's Mr. Allison's mark. Somebody taking a running iron to it. Changed it into a box W. Not me. Box W is Texas brand. It's easy to sell in Arizona. He hunts vomit for us. He got that cougar at Twin Peaks. I'm sure he said he did, but you see, hunting that uh, crooked shoe. That the only evidence you've got? That's right, Mr. Cartwright. But I'm going to find some more. 
You've got a wrestler on your payroll. He got away with it in Texas, but he ain't gonna get away with it here. You know, you've had four years without any trouble. Apparently, the Texas authorities think that you've squared the mistake you made, too. Yeah, well, Marcus Alley sure doesn't. No. Now, Tom. Mr. Cartwright, here's that lumber list. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Tom. Could you use another man on that uh, crew building that bunk yesterday? I sure could, Mr. Cartwright. From now on, join his crew, starting right now. Well, look, Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you, but no. What do you mean, no? Don't you know better than to argue with a fellow who's paying you wages? I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to keep me around close, out of Mr. Alley's way, but a man just can't hide out and feel much like a man. Heath, I don't want you around any cattle, not even ours. All right. But it won't do any good. The way Mr. Alley feels about me, he'll find some excuse to come out here. Now, look, you say that Alley doesn't kill unless he's alone. There's seven men on that bunkhouse crew. Stay close. Yes, sir. Marcus Alley's a killer. I say get rid of him. How? Pay him off. Send him down the road. Joseph, he was hired by the board of directors of the Cattlemen's Association. Well, Paul, you're the president of it. And chairman of the board. But I still have only one vote, and there are six others. Well, at least we can keep him off the Ponderosa. That's one thing. Well, there are five ranches bordering the Ponderosa, Joseph. Uh, Russell cattle could be driven anywhere across it, even hidden somewhere. Closing the Ponderosa to Alley. That could do a lot of harm to a lot of people. You're just not going to do anything about it? Is that what you're saying? Well, before I can try to change the board's mind about its decision, I have to be able to prove it was wrong. And at this moment, I don't know what it was. When in doubt, ask questions. Who's going to answer them? The cattlemen down in Texas who hired him to stop the wrestling there. Urgently request you telegraph, collect immediately your opinion, Marcus Alley, and the work he did in your area. Method used and results obtained. Ben Cartwright, Bonderosa Ranch, Virginia City. 60 cents for each 10 words. That'll be a dollar 80. Well, it's gonna be a little more. Paul wants the same telegram to send to every name on that list. It's gonna cost you. There must be 20 names here. 24. All them different towns, it'd take me a while to figure it out. We'll wait. Looks like we're late already. Now he got himself another rustler. Caught him in a water hole. Man tried to draw. And Mr. Alley was alone and shot him in self-defense. Well, Alley was sure right about how blind we was as to what was going on. We thought about it for even a minute. We'd have known that this one was one of the gang. And who was it? Lamar Forbes, that's who. Prudence Wells, Pa. Telegrams are right, well, inside. I, I don't know what to say. 
How much is Ali getting for killing my pa? How much are you giving him? We didn't bargain in any killings. You hired Ali. You turned him loose to kill. That's on your head, Mr. Conrad. Object to Ben Cartwright bringing Haas to a closed meeting. We don't have closed meetings. Read the Constitution. Any member in good standing or guest of a member in good standing can attend any meeting as long as he doesn't create a disturbance. Uh, all right. I don't have to like it. Mr. Chairman, let's get on with the work. Do we fire Alley or do we keep him on the payroll? Show of hands, I say keep him. Time for that. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. I believe discussion is in order. Every board member has a right to state his opinion. Well, gentlemen, I lost a cow since he come here. I say keep him and pay him a bonus to boot. And I say he's a killer and worse than a hydrophobic dog. I say fire him. Fast. Sure, that's because you had two rustlers on your payroll and you're afraid he'll find more. You say they're rustlers. Never been proved in a court of law. Gentlemen, Evidence, gentlemen, President. Gentlemen, please, both of you, sit down. This is a discussion, not a shouting match. Four of us had a meeting of our own before this one started. We're for Ali. And talk ain't gonna change our minds. Now, you other three got anything to say, say it, and let's get this voting over with. I had my say. I vote to fire him. But I, uh, have some telegrams here, which I'd like to... Uh, we heard about him. Good way to stack the deck. Twenty replies to my inquiries. Fifteen of them say that Mr. Ali did a good job. He stopped the rustling. Ten of them didn't like the way he did it. In four years, Mr. Alley brought 28 men to trial. He also shot and killed ten men. There were no witnesses to any of the killings. In every instance, Mr. Alley was alone. He said the other man drew first. Now, gentlemen, the same thing is happening here. Mr. Alley was alone when Harlan Wells was killed. Mr. Alley was alone when Lamar Forbes was killed. They drew first. Since it's my heart you're trying to nail to the barn door, I think I better say something. Every man that I brought to trial was found guilty, except one, and his uncle was one of the best lawyers in Texas. That's 27 out of 28 men. I guess that proves that I know my job. And as for there being no witnesses to the killings, I'm afraid that Mr. Cartwright is just plain wrong. He's got one working on his ranch. What is it that Heath said about when I caught him and the Tajwells? Were they guilty? Were they innocent? Gentlemen, I was quoting the messages I got by telegraph. And this one that Joe brought in is a further confirmation. Guilty or innocent? Heath told Hoss and Joe what happened. I was... I got it secondhand. Well, they, uh... They roped us a little steer out of a bog. They were, they were hungry and... Was it their steer, or was it someone else's steer? Well, it was somebody else's, but... They stole it. They were rustlers. We're talking about one mangy steer and three hungry men. One steer, a hundred steers. They were rustlers. I was the only man against three of them. Who drew first? The Tazwells did, but you sort of squeezed them into it. They drew first. I shot in self-defense. You shot to kill. Ten times in Texas, twice here. Twelve men. Twelve criminals, and they were trying to kill me. A man breaks the law, he's got to expect to pay for it. With his life? The law says one to fourteen years for stealing cattle. One to fourteen years. Now, that sounds pretty good. But if Wells or Forbes or any of the others had let me bring him in, why, people would be crying solely tears over him before the sheriff could, could lock the cell. 
And the men that they stole from would be saying that they shouldn't get hit too hard for making one mistake. They only get a year in prison, then other rustlers come drifting in because, you see, a year isn't that much to risk. Those that are sent to prison, they'll come out and they do it all over again. It happens every time. But I'll say this, that the 12 men that drew against me, they stole their last cow. And all 12 were guilty, right? How can you be sure? I know, Mr. Cartwright. I always know. Show of hands, Ben. Let's take a vote. Four votes to keep him. Count them, Ben. And three against. All right, so be it. You're still employed, Mr. Alley. But I must ask you to make every effort to bring in alive any wrestler you may find. Bring him in alive to stand trial. Unless he tries to kill me first. Allie, you have the confidence. You're the best. <laughs> Gone where? When? He left for White Creek Breaks about an hour ago. Yeah. He went down the west slope to Devil's Parlor. I tried to stop him, but he pulled a gun. What's true, Adam? Well, he's been trying to stay clear out of not wanting any trouble. But he figures the only way to save his life is to find those rustlers before Alley comes here for him. Well, he's one of our best trackers. If anybody can find anything up in that wild country, he can. He said he saw smoke over that way last week. Oh. You better round up House and Joe and get my horse saddle. Yes, sir. <laughs>
been a long time coming. Well worth waiting for. Got away from me in Texas. Finding you up here is the best thing that could have happened. You led me right into the middle of it, like I knew you would. Mr. Alley, I've never been in this camp before. I got here two, maybe three minutes before you did. You're all alike. You just can't stop stealing. Mr. Alley, I heard somebody ride off just before I rode in. You know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that lie, I could buy the Ponderosa. It's true, sir. It's a lie. Scum. Dirty the air you breathe, the ground you walk on. <laughs> I'd like you to make you play. No, sir, Mr. Alley. No, sir, I ain't gonna draw. You're gonna have to take me in. Four years I've waited for this minute. I would like you to make your play. You're gonna kill me anyhow, aren't you, Mr. Alley? Even if I don't draw. I'm not guilty. You're gonna kill me, aren't you? You're guilty, Heath. I ain't gonna draw. He didn't even try for his gun. You just shot him in the back. You murdered him. I caught a rustler. Tried to get away, I had to shoot him. Running irons in the fire, stolen beef. He found a camp and you followed him here. I killed a rustler. He said he heard someone ride away when he came in, but it's the oldest lie there is. I think it's the truth. And I think you're gonna hang. You know, maybe you'd like to try me first. Go on, reach for it! Get the horses in the cover. All but one. Ross? Yes, sir. Get a blanket and lean to him. Heath is your boss rustler. He learned his trade in Texas, went into business up here. The rustling's over. The rest of them will scatter when they see me bring his body into town. Suppose Heath was telling the truth. Suppose uh, somebody did ride out when they heard him coming. And that same somebody's gonna be riding back in. And then we'll have ourselves a real live prisoner. And maybe we can get to the straight of this. Now, Joe, you just do everything the way we figured it out. Don't try to be a hero. Right. a rustler, you ought to be glad he's dead. He was a human being, a man just like anybody else. Scum, just like all the rest of them. Dirty, filthy murderers. You gotta stamp him out when you find him. Or they'll drive every decent man and woman clear out of the country. Burning, killing, stealing. It's a gospel truth. I know, I've seen it happen. 
They shot my pa, dragged my mom and my sister out of the house, burned the house to the ground. How old were you when this happened? I was 13, going on 14. If I had a gun, I'd have shot every one of them. But you see, that's the point. I didn't have a gun. They gotta be killed, Mr. Cartwright. You think about it like I've thought about it, you see I'm right. Hey, Paul! Paul! You can't pat him on the head and lock him up for a little while and let him loose to do it again. They gotta pay for what they've done. Come on. to have moved those steers two hours ago. You haven't even changed the brands yet. I pay you all this money, and what do you do? You drink yourself stupid. Don't move. Don't reach for it. What is this, Joe? You got no cause to hold a gun on me, Joe. It's like we got the big one, Pa. You must be joking. He thought I was his foreman, Porter. Started chewing me out for not changing the brands on the cattle. I don't know anything about this camp. I... Come on, Mick. Don't try to lie. Sheriff Coffey will find Porter, and he'll talk to save his hide. And he'll name all the others, and they'll name you. End of the line, huh? You ought to be proud of yourself. A cattleman stealing from other cattlemen. Spare me the sermons, boy. You too, Cartwright. You don't even know what it's like to lie awake nights worrying about past due bills and loans. I enjoyed stealing your beef, Cartwright. Kind of made up for what was happening to me. You ain't even sorry. <laughs> One question. Josiah Heath. Was he one of your men? Cartwright, I'm not completely stupid. I knew that Heath was the one man I didn't even dare approach. He'd have told you before I was out of sight. Could have used Heath, too. If he'd been with me, he could have stolen you blind and you'd never have caught us. You ain't even sorry. As soon as they let you out, you'll do it all over again. The killing and the burning and the stealing. I ain't gonna let it happen. I'm unarmed, and he was going to murder me. Kill him! It's the only way to stamp him out. Kill him, don't you see? Kill him! Killing creates more problems. You've created enough of them. You're going to trial for murder. Paiutes horse, they're gonna be letting him out of jail any time now. Some of you and the rest of that bunch can keep that deputy busy. I'll put this little surprise under that Indian saddle blanket. Uh, deputy? Yeah? Boys? When's that Paiute coming out? Well, what's it to you? We got a little business with him. Look, man, we don't want any trouble. Get on out of here, will you? You two, get out of here. Come on. You just bring that Paiute out. And you, get away from that horse. Come on. That Paiute don't need no horse. We'll ride him out on a rail. Yeah, with some tarring feathers to keep him warm. That's right, ain't it, boys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, get that Indian out of down. We're not leaving until he comes out. Always a good day when you pay your taxes, Ben. Get Story County out of the red. What's all that noise about out there, anyhow? Well, nothing we can't handle. 
A friend of yours getting out of jail here in a little bit. A bunch of the town loafers getting together to greet him. A friend of ours? Who is it? Long Bear. Oh. What did he do this time? Well, he stole two corsets. And... <laughs> That's right. He stole two corsets, swapped them for whiskey, and went on a window-busting spree. I know that old guy had that much energy. All right, Long Bear. Two corsets. Time's up. <laughs> you can get out of here now. Mr. Ponderosa. Hello, Long Bear. Big Ponderosa. How are you, Long Bear? Where? Little Ponderosa. Oh, he's up the street. Good jail. Good grub. Long Bear, fine. <laughs> Thank you, Long Bear. Uh -huh. See you, Clem. So long, Ben. You better get mounted. Yeah, you better mount up and get out of this town and don't ever come back here. Get away from me, you dirty Paiute. That's enough handshaking, Long Bear. Come on, yeah, Long Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Long Bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fine. What made him buck like that, anyhow? I don't know. You think somebody could have put this bird under his saddle? Somebody sure enough could have. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my idea of fun. I'll give you one minute to get out of here and get locked up. All right. Would you tell that pirate to leave my kid alone, or next time I'll shoot him? Well, he didn't hurt your boy. All he did was shake his hand. He likes to shake hands. Is there any harm in that? He's an Indian, and I don't like Indians. Neither does the rest of this town. Well, except for the Indian lovers here. Oh, come on, Aaron. Look, don't give me orders, Mr. Ponderosa. Well, I know I'm only your poor neighbor, but don't push me. I'll push you, buddy, real good. Horse, stage just came in. Let's meet it. Long bear, mount up. All right, come on. Get out of here. Hey, did you see that horse buck? <laughs> Joe, Caddy, Coach, Ah, Holt? Yes, sir. Will Holt? Yes, sir. I'm Ben Cartwright. You've got to be our new bronc buster. This uh, my son's horse. Hi, right, Will. How are you? Will and Joe? Pleasure to meet you, Will. Candy, one of our top hands here. Will? How do you do? I hope you brought a wagon. I, uh, I got a couple saddles and a uh, mess of gear. Yeah, we got one right down there. Candy will take you and your gear. Uh... I, I brung something else. My bride. <laughs> what? Miss Holt, step down here and meet my new boss. Miss Holt, how do you do? down with the creek. He likes to play around real life. Well, here's your new home, Moon. How do you like it? Oh, it is fine. Excuse me, did you call her Moon? Well, if you had a wife and her name was Moon Rising Red over Big White Top Stony Mountain, what would you call her? Moon. That's what I decided. I know you're anxious to see the inside of the place. Come on. It ain't exactly a mansion, but uh, you can fix it up. It'll be real nice. Oh, I will fix it. We will be happy here. The best thing about it, it's on the Ponderosa. There's no rent. Hey, look at you. That kid's been playing checkers with a dummy. 
Why did he do that? He is lonesome. Why did he figure, Moon? Only a child without a friend would paint one on a piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Hey, that's real good you're figuring that out. I will bring in our things. Oh, come on. I'll do that. <laughs> got back here, that wood box near empty. What's the matter with you? Where you been? Just playing. Been up that Ponderosa shack again, ain't you? What'd they do? Catch you and run you off? They took a shot at me. Who did? I ain't sure. There's three of them in a wagon. Candy and a cowboy and an Indian woman. A young squaw? Are they moving into that shack? I don't know. Well, I'll find out for my own self. Keep an eye on the steel. That junk fills up. Move it for another under. Keep the fire going. didn't know we had ourselves a blacksmith, too. Well, I'm a long way from the best, but uh, I fixed a few of them up. I finished gentle in that black about noon. I figured out how to find something useful to do. That cut's almost healed, but the way he throws that right front hoof, he'll cut that leg again the first hundred yards he runs. Well, that's what this is for. I think maybe we can correct that. See, I've got a little extra weight on the outside of the shoe, and uh, maybe he'll tend to throw it straighter and won't brush that other leg. Yeah, that might do it. It's been done before, but it takes quite a bit of blacksmithing. Well, we know a lot more about it after he's worn it for a while. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I know I just uh, come on your payroll, but uh, we need some supplies. I sure would appreciate a little advance if I could get it. Oh, sure. How much do you need? Uh, $20. Oh, of course. We didn't have to wait until now to ask for it. I figured I'd earn it first. <laughs> oh, one other thing. Could we uh, borrow your buckboard? Of course you can. Why don't you help yourself with some of our supplies, save your trip? Well, Moon needs some new pots and uh, stuff, a new water bucket. I think we may as well go on into town. Uh, Will, why don't you, uh, Hoss is going into town today. Why don't you go along with him? Yeah, yeah, Will, I'm going in. You and, you and Moon ride in with me. Mr. Cartwright, if you're worried about me taking my Indian wife to town, don't. I can handle it. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about her. Well, we went all through that before we got married. But I do appreciate you thinking about her. And we would enjoy the company, Haas. I'll get your money.
Do you like it? I made it for you. How could you? You've never seen me before. Every day for more than a week, you have watched me from behind those bushes. Like an enemy. I want you to be my friend. But you're an Indian. Indians need friends, too. Sit down. Play with it. You made this by yourself? Yes. That's real good for a female. How'd you do it? With a knife. How'd you fasten on the paddle? With pitch from a pine tree. Oh, where'd you find it? Down the creek, near where you live with your father. He ain't my father. He's my stepfather. How'd you know where I live? I tracked you. You did? Yes. What is your name? He wants me to tell people it's gore like his, but it ain't. It's green. Bridger Green. Bridger Green. What's yours? My friends call me Moon. Who give you a local name like that? My mother. The moon was the first thing she saw after I was born. What was her name? Running Deer. What is your mother's name, Bridger? I ain't got no mother. She died when I was little. Can I keep this home? Yes, I made it for you. Could you learn me to follow tracks? It would take much time. I got lots of time. I sneak out on them every day. You do not like your stepfather? He tends me all the time. He whips you? Yeah. But wait till I'm 12 and can earn 11. Then I'll slope out of there so fast you won't know what for. It is my husband and Haas Cartwright. Come. Say hello. No! Come on, honey. We're going to town. Hey, tell them about the cows. Oh, yeah. Right? You won't believe this. The first day Ben Cartwright moved him in up there, my kid comes home, says he's taking a bath in the creek. You know what? My cows wouldn't drink that creek water for two old days. <laughs> yeah, not till the Indian dirt washed out of it. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, Aaron, I thought the sheriff was supposed to run all the Indians out of town. Oh, well, she's a special tribe. She's a Ponderosa Indian. Ain't that right, Hoss? That's right, Aaron. She lives on the Ponderosa and her husband works there. Her husband? No, you mean her squaw man, don't you? I wouldn't call him that if I were you. And what if I do? You got all the stuff you need? Just need some groceries, Sal. Fine. Please ride down the street. I'll be right with you. Hey, squall man! <laughs> I told you not to call him that. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did, didn't you? Squall man! Squall man! <laughs> Please. Just a minute, honey. These JoJo's got a few wrong ideas about our marriage. I'm just going to set them straight. Now, my wife's father is a hunk papa Sioux chief. And her grandpa was a Sioux chief before him. And her great grandpa a chief before him. And my great grandpa was a captain under George Washington. So you might just say this here's a union of two old, established American families. Now, anybody got anything else they want to say? What's going on, Haas? Hi, uh, Pete. We just had to teach these Yehus some matters. Pete, meet Will Holt and his wife. He's our new bronc buster. Will, this is Pete Stevens. Sheriff, sure. pleased to meet you. Come on, Will, let's go. Can't you stay out of trouble? Those dirty, filthy Indians. You let one of them move in here, Pretty soon, you know, they're so thick there ain't room for decent folks. They're decent and law-abiding. And we've got just as much right to be here as you have. Now, if you think you're going to make trouble for them, forget it. 
Forget it. That's all they're gonna do about it. Forget it. We want something done around here, boys. There ain't no point in asking any lovers to do it. No, we're gonna have to do it ourselves. Nice fresh hot coffee here, Park. Can I pour you some? Well, you know, it's really, uh, really horrible about that grizzly bear getting those 40 steer up there in a the canyon, ripping our heads off. And yeah, oh, yeah, terrible. And the uh, lightning striking the city hall, burning plumb to the ground. Paul, what's the matter? Paul? What? You seem to be troubled about something. What's the matter? Didn't have any dinner, no coffee. What's wrong? I'm off my feed. Paul, what happened in down yesterday, anyhow? I like Virginia City. I like this town. I'm proud of it. Yesterday, I ride into town. A bunch of fellas there wave a howdy. They just turn away. I go into the Silver Dollar. Everybody suddenly stops talking. So I, uh... Ask Clem about it. He says it's Will Holt and his wife. The Holtz? Yeah. And Gore is spreading lies about him, stirring everybody up. And now everybody's blaming me for bringing a Sioux Indian to the Ponderosa. Oh, don't let that bother you, Pa. That's the riffraff. It's not the decent people. I know it's the riffraff. But Clem thinks it's serious about the Holtz. He says I ought to get rid of him. Well, what'd you tell him? Never mind, I'm sorry I asked that. I can understand Aaron Gore and his kind. But there's something more than meets the eye here. And what meets the eye is sure bad enough. Put your hands over your eyes. Keep them shut tight. I will. So good. I guess I better go. Bridget, I told you it would take much time and hard work. Now, try it again. Use your eyes and think. You gotta cook supper. No. Will went up to the West Fork to look at some horses for Mr. Cartwright. He will be gone many hours. You think I can? I'm sure you can. Will you now show me? Here, Ryan. They're even. Because you 
wasn't carrying nothing. Oh, good. Now you're starting to track like a real Sioux boy. Um, you know why I done better today? Yeah, because you used your head. That ain't the only reason. I'm carrying an Indian charm. Where did you get it? Home. Indian, ain't it? Yes. Ogallala Sioux, a good luck charm. How did it happen to be in your house? Just there in a box. Here's for you. Oh, Richard. I cannot accept this. You gave me the water wheel. You taught me to track. You keep it. Now there's a squall living next to me. Yeah. The more I will it around, the more I think you're right. We ought to run her out. Who's we? Oh, you and me. Jonas Armstrong's pa was scalped by a Sioux. There's plenty of people around here who hate Indians. Why, they'd be glad to help you get rid of them. You might have an idea there, Mealy. He's a friend of mine. Go ahead and talk. I came to give you some advice, Ann. You'd be smart to take it. Now, look, this place ain't as big as the Ponderosa, but it's mine. While I'm on it, I don't aim to be elbowed. Not by you nor anybody else. I'm not elbowing you, Ann. I don't see you from one year to the next. Yeah, but when you do, you look at me like I was a, a wet dog or a dirty Paiute. I don't look at you in any one particular way or another. If you think I do, maybe it's because you're looking for it. You can make a good living here. Look at this place. Rusty tools, corners and hold, your roof's caving in. Why'd you come here to give me a Sunday school lecture? Because if you did, I ain't got time to listen to it. I got work to do. All right. I'll skip the lecture. Well, I'm purely obliged, Mr. Cartwright. Now, Muley and me can get on with what we was doing before you butted in. Not just yet. I came here to talk to you about something. But my bronc buster, Will Holt, and his wife. What about them? You've been doing some talking town and telling lies, stirring up trouble. I want you to put a stop to it, all of it. Oh, yeah, I'll put a stop to it. As soon as you run him out of here, Indian lover. You just watch yourself, Ann. You stop putting names to things. The man's a good man. I don't care if he's red, white, blue, or purple. Will Holt's a good man. Yeah, he's some man. What kind of man is it marries an Indian? What have you got against Indians? I don't associate with them. I don't let my kid associate with them, and I don't want one of them for a neighbor. Why? Because they're dirt, that's why. Those are your thoughts. Fine. But you keep your thoughts to yourself and keep away from Mrs. Holt. If you mistreat her in any way, even peep at her again from behind those trees over there, you'll answer to me. Is that clear? I ain't gonna mistreat her. But remember, I'm not the only one that wants her out of here. I'm not responsible for what somebody else does. Now don't let any harm come to her. And what are you so grinning about? That Ben Cartwright sure got you Buffalo, didn't he? Well, that's a dirty lie. I talked right up to him. You heard me. Sure. Any dog barks big in his own yard. And I noticed you bark twice as big when he's out of sight, except when he's standing right here in front of you. Ben Codrod don't scare me none at all. He sure ain't gonna order me around. Yeah, unless my hearing's going bad, he just did. And that Indian girl, you've been sneaking around watching her like Cartwright said? I had to see what she was doing up there, didn't I? What was she doing? Nothing, nothing.
I've been looking for you. Come on in here. Leave me alone with this boy. Now, where'd you get this? You sure never made it, but I found it hid under your bed along with my hatchet. Now, where'd you get it? I stole it. Where? Up the creek. And that squaw made it, huh? I know it was Indian work. What was you doing up there? Just looking around, like you do. Don't get impudent with me. What I do ain't got nothing to do with you, boy. Now, I want to know, you been talking to her? Now, speak up, boy, or I'll rawhide you ragged. You been talking to her? Yes. And what about that no good squaw man of hers? You been talking to him too? No, I ain't never seen him but once. Now you're lying to me, boy. You seen him. Comes home to eat, don't he? You been eating up there too, ain't you? No, Aaron. Will ain't home. He's up at Westbrook looking at some horses. The Westfall. Will, huh? You ain't never seen him, but you know his name. What about her? You know her name, too? Her name's Moon. She made the water wheel for me, and she's learning me to read sign. And she don't smell bad like you said. She smells good. She stinks. So does this. Now, wait a minute, boy. I'm through with you. Now, you've been rooting around in my stuff, ain't you? You've been stealing from me. I didn't mean no harm. You took that charm of mine, didn't you? Now, what'd you do with it? I lost it. Oh, boy, you're lying to me. Now, where is it? I gave it to Moon. That squall, you gave it to her? Yes, because she gave me the water wheel. What'd she say? Come on, boy, answer. She said... It was a Sioux good luck charm. Yeah, no good luck just run out, boy. Don't no good to run out. Don't Don't get out of hand. There ain't nothing you can do but tan them. But I heard you must have done a job. Well, you're telling a kid, you gotta let him know you mean it, right? Yeah, that's the only way to handle it. Whale them if they get out of line. Handle it just right, Aaron. Yeah, I sure did. You know, Muley, I just decided I had enough of Ben Cartwright telling me what I can and what I can't do. We can get Jonas to ride with us. I'm gonna run that Indian and her squaw man clean out of the country. Well, Jonas will go. But when? When are you gonna do all this? Tonight. As soon as it gets dark enough. so you won't be alone. Thank you. Ouch! Oh, Bridger, I hurt you. I am sorry. It's nothing. Is it your back? Let me see. The skin is broken. Oh, Bridger, did he whip you? With what? His belt. Where is he now? Home. There's some men there drinking. I ran away and I ain't going back. Richard, can you walk as far as the Ponderosa? What for? I want Mr. Cartwright to see this. You do not have to stay with that man any longer. Can you walk that far? If you go with me, I will go with you. Now. Hey, squad, come on out. You dirty Indian. Out the back door, quick! Run to the Ponderosa! Hurry! Bush coming to you! Come 
in handy. There she goes. Oh, no shoot. Leave her to me. Take care of the cat. It's a gun to me, Squaw. Now you're gonna pay for that. You are Bridget's stepfather. You are Aaron Gore. Well, you know me, huh? Well, you're gonna pay for that, too. When I get through, you're gonna be glad to ride out of here, you and your Squaw man. You teach my kid to steal. To steal from me and give to you. Now, this is mine, and you're wearing it. Take it. I do not want anything of yours. Oh. Run when you had the chance, Squaw. Oh, please! Oh, let me go! Donna, Donna, Iyapu! Donna, Donna, Iyapu! Let me go! Don't hurt me! Oh. Well, I'll hurt you. And when I let you go, you won't stop running till you hit California. Monka! Wandeska! Big Sue! No white man would know that word. You are Sue! No! My mother was. A dirty, stinking Sue! I spent 20 years of my life trying to get away from being called a half-breed. And I ain't gonna do it anymore. <laughs> it's too bad you had to find out about that. Just too bad. Because you ain't gonna live long enough to tell anybody. Help me. We gotta get him to a doctor. Take his feet. Kind of a wasted trip, Joe. And only a couple of horses worth messing with. Well, you never know unless you take a look-see. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Right. Will? 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 Will shot him. Shot who? I shot Eric Gore. He tried to kill me. Get out of the house. <laughs> said you just shot Aaron Gore. Hurry up, boss. <laughs> You're all right now. Moon, it's all right. It's all yeah. right. Uh, now, you just do some of this now. Just a little. That's it. Now, how did it happen? Where's Bridger? I sent him here when the riders came. Well, uh, Bridger isn't here yet, Moon. What riders? How many were there? I saw three. One of them was Aaron Gore. <laughs> I ran it, and he caught me. We fought for his gun. I shot him. Did you kill him? I do not know. Why 
Why did he come after you, honey? I found out about him. He's a half-breed. His mother was a Sioux. Well, that's it. Where did you leave him? By a cabin down by the creek. Take some men. Find him. If he's still alive, take him back to town. And find that boy. He may be in danger. It's all right now, dear. Here. Here's some good stuff. Just calm down. The squaw shot Aaron. He said she did. He ain't made a sound or a move since he told us she shot him. And he used his last breath to tell us who did it. Well, come daylight, we got us a rope job to do. Aaron or the boy. That cabin's a wreck. I'm surprised they didn't burn it. Found this down by the creek. It is Aaron Gore's. He dropped it. Did you not see Bridger? No, ma'am. Oh, where can he be? I sent him here last night. He knows the way. We must find him. Moon will find him. Mr. Carver. I didn't know she was here. It's all right, Candy. What is it? There's a lynch mob on their way out here. They spent last night working up a hate. I made sure they were on their way and I rode out ahead of them. Lynch mob? It's all right. According to them, you shot him in the back, Moon. In the back? No, that is not true. We were facing each other. We were struggling for the gun. It went off. That's the way she says it was. That's the way it was. Well, I believe you. But uh, that mob doesn't care who shot him or where. Yeah, well, I'm going to stop a few of them. Calm down, Will. Get the rifles. You stay here with your wife. Hey, Cartwright! We know she's in there, Cartwright. Bring up that squad. Yeah. You came here because you think that Mrs. Holt shot Aaron Go in the back, and you want to lynch her. That's right, we're going to straight her up, too. There isn't going to be any lynching here on the Ponderosa. Mrs. Holt says that she shot Aaron in self-defense. Ah, no. We know different. You say different. Well, we're going to have to let the law decide that. We ain't waiting for no law. Just turn your horses around nice and easy and ride on back where you came from. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! Hey, boy. You belong with us, not with those folks that are hiding that squaw that killed Aaron. Aaron ain't dead. Doctor told me he's bad hurt. But ain't gonna die. The kid's lying. Moon didn't shoot him, I did. Aaron threw down Moon's rifle. She ran away and he chased her. Picked up the rifle and shot him. I heard Aaron say she shot me. Besides, why would a kid want to shoot his own pa? There she is.
I will show you why. Let's get out of here. Hold on. Just wait a minute. Would you? Who are the two men that were with Aaron? Them two. Muley and Jonas. They're the ones that broke up the cabin. Muley, Jonas, you stay close to town. I'll be there tomorrow to swear to warrant for your arrest. Started again? Oh, thank you, Alice. You are very generous. Uh, that's the least we could do. Any news, Bob? Well, yeah, in a way. Gotta talk to Bridger here. Don't tell it, get right up here. Now, Bridger, you're a pretty big young fellow. And I'm gonna talk to you like you were a grown up man. All right? All right. I've been spending a little time with your stepfather. He's going to be all right. He feels kind of badly about the way things have turned out here. And Bridger, he'd like to go off someplace by himself and start all over again. So the court has appointed an executor to... Well, an executor is a man who looks after the things that you're not able to look after till you're 21. And that homestead that you've been living at, that place is yours now. Live there by myself? I'm much of a cook. <laughs> well, the, the judge has thought of that, too. And he says, uh, if you have a mind to, that you can adopt some new parents who can live there with you. I can? Yeah. Now, Bridger, can you think of a young married couple that you'd like to have as your new mom, Paul? Yes, sir. I sure can. Well, now, Moon and Will Holt, do you accept young Bridger as your newly adopted son? Well, I sure do, if Moon does. Oh, I accept. Fine. Bridger? You accept Moon and Will Holt as your new mom, Pa? I sure do. I think that settled it, don't it? Well, uh, not, not quite. See, the executor has to give his approval. Who's the executor? <clears throat> I am. <laughs> <laughs> And sit down. Did I, uh, did I do anything wrong, Warden? Sit down. I've got a wire here from Placerville. They've arrested a man for robbery and murder. Oh, what's that got to do with me, sir? He also admitted to holding up the Virginia City Bank a year and a half ago. It'll be a few days before the legal work is straightened out, but that means that uh, the sentence against you will be reversed. You'll be a free man. I don't pretend to uh, know how you feel, Postley. Having to spend a year and a half in a cell for something that you didn't do. All that I can say is that we're sorry. The law is sorry that we made a mistake. But thank heavens we found out that it was a mistake. Are you sure? I'm sure. Uh, I think I'll... 
I'll go back to my cell. Mosley? Uh, yes, sir. Good luck. Uh, thank you, Warden. Candy, you just wait a few years. They get longer. Come on, let's get some beat. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Hey, yeah, pretty good cowboy. I haven't seen a man set a better saddle. Thanks. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Didn't expect to see you back so soon. You get everything finished up in town? Our uh, horse is finishing up, huh? I thought you might want to see this. It's a wire that was sent to Sheriff Coffin. Oh, yeah? Postley. Postley? What about him? He's been released from prison. A man in Placerville confessed to the robbery. Oh, no. Come out of the alley that night. You had to tell the jury that. It's not your fault they found him guilty. It's not a question of whose fault it is, Joe. It happened. If there weren't any other suspects. Like you didn't bring in the verdict, the jury did. Can you imagine how he must have felt all that time in prison, knowing he was innocent? Pot could have been worse. It could have been the rest of his life. Oh, he's a lucky man. I imagine he's feeling pretty good right now. Say nothing. What's done is done. It ain't nobody's fault. Thank you, John. For what? Oh, for, for making it easy for me. I told you it wasn't nobody's fault, didn't it? <laughs> come on, come on. Sit down. Come on. Let's have a drink, huh? Okay. Come on. No, come on. I don't want a drink. Thank you, man. No, I'm sorry I didn't get by earlier. I meant to. I wanted to come by and tell you there was no hard feelings, but I got busy up at the diggings this past month, and I didn't get a chance. Well, you, uh... You doing some mining? Yeah, a little bit. Well, I thought the farming was your stock. Well, it was, but uh, I lost that little piece of land I had. 
Well, look, there's plenty of good farming land right here in the Ponderosa. Oh, bad. No, no, no. I reckon I'll stick to mining for a while. Any luck? Well, I've had some pretty good signs. Not that I could buy a bowl of beans with yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you. Uh, if you need a steak or anything like that, you don't oh, be very happy. Thank you, man. I can manage all right. Keeping busy is the main thing. You sure now? I'm sure. Well, I just... I reckon I'll be on my way. I wanted to come by and tell you there was no hard feeling. Well, John, I, I, I'm happy you did. And, and, you know, anything that you need, you just have to holler. Well, you know, there is one thing. Well, name it. That prison food's nothing to shout at, but my own cooking is even worse. <laughs> I could use an invite to supper some night. Well, but tonight. Now, the cook's away, but oh. they say I'm a pretty fair hand in the kitchen. <laughs> Shoot, I got some supplies on the mule outside. I got to get them up to the oh. mine. Well, uh, tomorrow night, then, huh? You got yourself a supper yet. Well, fine. We'll see you here tomorrow night. <laughs> <All right. laughs> John? Yeah. Good to see you again. It's good to see you, Ben. Real good to see you. And that was a conversation. I got to admit to something. It took a load off my mind to see how well he'd come out of it. Same here. I hope he has a lot of luck with that mine of his. He could sure use some. You know, that mining can be pretty rough when you try to go it alone. Oh, yes, it can. That man has so much pride, he just won't let anybody help him. You got to give him credit. Yeah. Tell you something else we got to give him. That's a supper that he'll never forget. With chicken and dumplings, the works. <sighs> Chicken and dumplings. Dad burn it, Paul, can't you? Can't you do it another day? I mean, I gotta leave in the morning. It'll take me two or three days to make all those line camps. Well, now, Hoss, that's uh, exactly why I sent you on that little mission. Make sure that John gets a chance at dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> of course, having Joe along will just make the time fly by. <laughs> but, Paul, you don't... That's a... That horse. Daddy. Good night, Mr. Carray. Good night, Paul. <laughs> Check it in the blood. <laughs> I hate to make a pick of myself, but I am. I think it tastes this good in a long time. <laughs> well, that's what it's here for. <laughs> you sure weren't fooling him when you said you could cook. How about some potatoes? Well, you talk me into it. <laughs> well, I tell you, working in a mine sure gives a fellow an appetite. Why'd you ever decide to give mining a try? Well, a fella had to sell before me. He died. I lost some books on mining, so I read them. Better than staring at the wall. And when you're in a cell for a long time, you get used to working inside. Besides, I can hit it big, you know. You said you had some encouraging ore samples, huh? Oh, I ain't sure, Ben. I'm working an old abandoned mine looking for a new vein. You're really just kind of going on what I read in the books. I sure hope I'm right. Hmm. Well, you know, you, you could get a, an outside expert to yeah, take a look. Yeah, no, I could, but you never know who you can trust. And if it looked good, you know, they'd be swarming all over me in an hour's time. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ben, you used to do some mining, didn't you? Some. Well, look here. Couldn't you uh, give me a fair idea of what I got myself into? Well, I'm no expert, but I'd be happy to take a look. <sighs> well, when could you do it? Anytime you say. Well, look here. There's a couple hours daylight left. Uh, how about right now? All right, fine. <laughs> You want to go with us, Candy? Sure. <laughs> I'll saddle the horse. <laughs> this could be my lucky day. <laughs> Yeah, 
of these timbers. They've been here a long time. That's right up ahead here. You know, now that we're here, I'm almost afraid to have you look. Why? Oh, well, I reckon it's because it means so much to me. Well, John, if we never look, we'll never know. You're right, Ben. You're absolutely right. Let's go. There it is. yourself in one month? Oh, that shaft was already started. I, I just did the rest of it. You've really done a job, John. Well, I'd do anything if you really want it bad enough. Well, let's get down and take a look. Yeah, be careful on that rope ladder. I'll get a lantern. joke, man. Mistake I pulled the ladder up. I didn't mean to. Made a mistake, but we all make mistakes, don't we? Yeah. Well, mistake or whatever, John. Come on, drop that ladder and bring the light down. What for? John, you did a lot of hard work. Don't you want to know if you hit it big? Yeah, I did do a lot of work, didn't I? Come on, get down here. Bring that light down so we can see what you got. Well, I know what I got, Ben. I got you. And Candy come to help me, did you? I can't let you do that, man. You, you've done enough for me already. Now, John, listen to me. No! You listen to me. When was the last time that you helped me out? Sometimes I can't remember how long ago it was. Time don't matter, does it? John, we know how you feel. No, you don't know how I feel. But you will. You will. John. John! Uh, look. Just drop that ladder down. And let us out of here. We'll just forget this ever happened. We won't say a word to anyone. Ben, will you promise me that if I let you out, you won't say anything to anybody? Now, you promise? Yes, I promise. How about you, Candy? Do you promise? I promise, John. <laughs> That's funny. Now, who are you going to tell if I don't let you out of there? John, you just can't leave us here to die. Oh, no, no, no. You're not going to die, Candy. Oh, no. I wouldn't let that happen. No, there's food and water there. Everything a man could want. Everything you gave me.
not you. It's no use. I can't get a hold anywhere. He said he'd give us food and water. That's what he said. In his state of mind, there's no telling. How about Joe and Hollis? When they get back, we don't show up, they'll look for us. They'll find us. Candy, could you find your way here without Postley? Now we're just gonna have to wait and Hope that he comes to his senses or makes a mistake. What do we do in the meantime? Just sit here? Yeah. We sit. And pray. They're both here. I can't wait to get the look on their face when they see how quick we got those line shacks checked. Yeah, well, I don't mind working quick, but I sure hate to do without breakfast. Yeah, well, maybe you get lucky. Might be some of those chicken and dumplings left. Sounds good. Yeah, well, you put the horses away, and I'll check on the chicken. Yeah, all right. Chicken left? Hey, take a look at this. Everything's still on the table from dinner last night. Ain't like Paul to leave a mess like that. It sure ain't. Nobody in the house either. Well, they couldn't be too far off, both the horses out there in the barn. I think I'll have a look around. You check with the boys in the bunkhouse. Doesn't make any sense. None of the hands saw them this morning. The horses are still in the barn. None of the wagons are missing. Maybe somebody drove them into Virginia City for something. I don't know. Look, even if you're right, they would have been back by now. Besides, what about the dinner dishes? How do you explain that? I can't. Evening, Joe. Hoss. Sorry to come calling so late, but uh, I want to see your pa for a minute. He's not here, John. Oh. He didn't say anything to you last night about where he was going to be today, did he, John? Well, that's why I come by. I come to apologize for not coming to dinner last night. I worked so hard at the mine all day yesterday. I just plum forgot and fell asleep. What is it? Something wrong? We don't know. Nothing I can do. No. No, thank you, John. Well, I'll be on my way. Look, uh, you sure you tell him that I'm sorry about last night, huh? Yeah, we'll tell him, John. Nice, nice seeing you boys again. Yeah, good night, John. I'm gonna ride in town and have a look around. Maybe we're making a big thing out of nothing. 
Perhaps I'll be on. How long do you think we've been down here? Well, it's uh, kind of hard to tell the difference between night and day. I don't know. How long do you think? Oh, day, day and a half. Seems more like a week or a month. How long do you think you'll keep us down here? Huh? Oh. I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Forever, that's how long. You can't let us out now. We're going to spend the rest of our lives down here. Well, we can't. We're here. Huh? Yeah. And yeah, there's nothing too much that we can do about it, it seems. And he promised to bring us food and water. He promised. Yes, he did. He'll bring it. But you said yourself he's sick. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. He'll bring it. Suppose he doesn't come back. Suppose he just leaves us here to die. Well, did my friends think I'd forgot about him? Hostley, let us out of here. Can't be done, Candy. Well, you yourself said that I've done a lot of work here. Besides, it ain't so bad, is it? You got food and water. You got each other to talk to. I never had nobody to talk to. John, John just, just listen for a minute now. It's not going to work. They're going to... Look for us when they get back, Hoss and Joe. They know that you were the last one to be with us, to see us. And they're going to find you, and it'll be all over. Well, they don't have to find me, Ben. I found them. What? Yeah, I went by the ranch last night. Told them I was sorry I missed dinner the other night. They're right worried about both of you. I haven't offered to help them. They'll find out. Somehow they'll find out. No, I don't think they will, Candy. And I've had a long time to think about this, you know. Now, look, John, they'll see the, the dishes that were left on the table. Put three settings there. They'll, they'll see that. They'll know you're lying. Oh, well, them dishes. Now, I took the liberty the other night of going back in the house and washing mine up and putting them away. It's a habit I got in prison. Now, why don't you both stop arguing and pleading with me all the time? Now, I did the same thing when I first went to prison, but it don't do no good at all. All it does is get you all upset. Here's some more food and water for you. I'll be back in a couple of days. Take it, Ben. Take it. Of course, it don't compare to that meal you prepared for me. And after a while, it gets to taste pretty good. Then after a while, nothing tastes like anything at all. Goodbye, fellas.
Britain ought to try to escape. I'm gonna have to put that on your record. Nothing, huh? Nothing. Nobody's seen him nor heard of him. Two weeks and nothing. What about the reward posters? Well, they're all done. Roy sent them out to every town within 200 miles. I don't know what good they're going to do. The news has been in every newspaper from Carson City to Placerville. If anybody had any information, we'd have heard by now. All we can do is wait. Do you think a man could stay alive down here? Food and water. A long time. A long time. A lifetime. Do you ever think about dying? Every man does, I guess. I've thought about it a lot since we were down here. First, I was afraid that he wouldn't come back and we'd die. And I said, Matt, listen, wait. Pray that he'd come back. Now I pray that he won't come back, so it'll be over. As long as we're alive, there's a chance chance to what? To go blind in the darkness? To go out of our minds? Why doesn't he just take that shotgun and get it over with? Just get it over with. So you can check the telegraph office again. Maybe something's turned up. Oh, so we're kidding ourselves. It's been a month. The only chance we had that kidnappers were holding for a ransom, and even that's no good now. It's no use. Bernard, I, I keep thinking that that door's gonna open. He's just gonna be standing there like nothing ever happened. Morning, boys. Beautiful morning. Well, you're awful quiet this morning. I figured you'd be happy to see me. Hey, I brought a newspaper. I thought I'd read to you a little bit. Oh, yeah. 
have any breakfast. <laughs> yes, sir, you're both famous now. Yeah, you're right on the front page. <laughs> yes, sir, it says reward offered for anybody knowing anything about you. <laughs> you sure you don't want me to read it to you? Huh? Well, I'll read it to you anyway. Yeah, it says cart right. Missing. One. Guess what uh, it says. Is it a week? Month? Year? Come on, guess, Ben. You're insane, Postley. You know that, don't you? You're insane, and you try to drive us insane. But it won't work. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, John. You're down there, and I'm up here. And you, you feel, feel sorry for me. Mm. I'm free to go any place I want to. No, you're not. You can't get away from here. You gotta keep coming back day after day, week after week. You're just as much a prisoner as we are. You'll never be free. Well, now, what if I just go away and let you die? No, you won't. You can't. <laughs> you wouldn't have anything to live for. <laughs> you're sure of that, aren't you? You are real sure? Yes. Yes, I'm sure. You're trapped, John. You'll never be free. Never. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Who's insane now, Carter, right? <laughs> Who's insane now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. More water for our friends? Yes, sir. You can't let something happen to them. Ah, this'll do it. This'll do it. Sorry about the dynamite. I'm all right now. I don't know what happened to me. All of a sudden, it was there. Forget it, I understand. You know, if we ever get out of here, you're gonna owe me a lot of back wages.
bad accident. You busted your legs up real good. If it had been hurt any worse, the doc said you'd have lost them both. Doc, what the heck? Doc's already been here and gone. Little Joe's taking him back to town. Where am I? You're at the Ponderosa, John. Oh, Ponderosa? No, I can't be. John, now I told you to lay still. You got two busted legs, and if you keep moving around, they ain't gonna set proper. Hey, get out of here. John, you ain't gotta go nowhere. Not for another six weeks, anyhow. Six weeks? Doctor's orders. Now you, you lay still. Let me go get you something to eat. met you all, I couldn't believe it. Believe what? The way you are, the way you care about each other. I guess I just wasn't used to it. You know, the way I was always saying, I wouldn't stay in the same spot very long. I was making out like I was getting ready to leave. I just never meant it, that's all. Never thought you did. I always thought I meant it when I said it. I make about as much sense as postly. Oh, Candy. Nobody makes much sense sometimes when you think about it. You have problems. You hope for the day when they'll be over. And when they are over, you dream up new problems to take their place. Yeah. I guess it was that... A new problem that bothered me. What new problem? Having friends. A lot of rest yesterday, that's for sure. Yeah. See if you can scoot back a little bit, Don. Easy. There you go. Yeah, I, I brought you some soup in here last night. He's already asleep. Little Joe's not the best cook in the world, but try some of this anyhow. You need it. <coughs> Why are you doing all this? All of what? Taking care of me, feeding me. Well, we hardly know each other, Hodge. You ain't no friend of mine. Well, my pa always said that every man was your friend until he showed you otherwise. It ain't no big thing being friendly to folks. Eat up, John. You need strength. Hoss. Sorry about your pa. I've been reading about it in the paper. I'm real sorry. Well, thank you, John. 
by the way. That little piece of farmland Paul promised you, it's still yours if you ever change your mind. He sure wants you to have it. Need anything else? He's gone. How could he get out of bed with two broken legs? I don't know, but he did. John! What in tarnation got into you anyways? Get yeah, some water. Easy. Water. Water. You gotta help me. John, take it easy. We're gonna help you. I don't know why I done it. Let's get him in the house. No, no, no. They'll die. I never meant him to die. John, what are you talking about? Who'll die? Your pa. In the mine. What? Where? I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll hitch up the deal. Hurry! Hurry! He's alive. I wanted you to feel what I felt. To know the darkness and the loneliness. Happen to help me. I don't know why. 